welcome to the Psych Central podcast, where each episode features guest experts discussing psychology and mental health in everyday, plain language. Here's your host, Gabe Howard. Welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central podcast. Calling into the show today, we have Lucia Giovannini, a former Italian supermodel who holds a doctorate in psychology and counseling and a bachelor's in psychoanthropology and is a member of the American Psychological Association. Lucia, welcome to the show. Gabe, I'm really honored to be here. I am extremely excited to talk to you about our subject, which is stepping outside your comfort zone. But before we get started, I really just want to ask, what's it like to go from an Italian supermodel to a, a doctorate? For some reason in our culture, we tend to think of those things as mutually exclusive, but but obviously they're not. Well, yeah. Well, for me, it was actually stepping out of my comfort zone. I started working as a model and then it soon became a full-time career. And at the beginning, it was awesome. So I moved to Milan. I was living, you know, beautiful house, I was traveling the world, etc, etc. But after a while, a short while, I started feeling depressed. Because uh, since I was a child, I've always felt a deep calling for creating a better world. And not just for us humans, but also for the other beings that share this planet with us, like animals, trees, Mother Earth. And so really listening to this call again, and I had to do this going through a depression, sadly, but the depression was actually a wake-up call for me. So in order to, to follow my, my true calling, I had to leave everything that I had created so far, my house, my career, uh, my marriage at that point. So it was really stepping out of my comfort zone. When you talk about stepping out of your comfort zone, do you literally just mean doing something that makes you uncomfortable? Or is it is it deeper than that? It's definitely doing something that makes me uncomfortable, but it's even more than that. In my case, for example, I was scared to death to let go of all my certainties. And so it's really uh, going beyond fear, going beyond uh, all your conditioning beliefs that say you won't make it, you are not good enough, uh, you will not be able to survive, etc., etc. So it's really uh, uncovering new territories or traveling in, in, you know, new paths. Did the people around you see this as concerning or a cry for help or self-sabotage going from... Uh, you know, modeling and like you said, all that glamour over to academia, which again, people see as really two different worlds. So was there concern from the people around you that you were running away or abandoning something that used to be important to you? Well, they actually thought I was crazy. I, I tried to speak, you know, with my husband at that time. And he said, well, seek help. Because there's something wrong with you. And then I spoke to my friends, my like co-workers, the other models or photographers or, you know, designers who are my friends. And all of them said, well, you know, I think there's something wrong with you. Please seek help, seek professional help. So, you know, uh, it, it was really difficult. And even after I took that decision and I, and I let everything go, all my friends abandoned me because they thought I had gone crazy. So <laughs> in th th that was the other harder part. One hard part was, you know, the money. And the other, the other part was my friends and, and all the people around me because they, they couldn't understand that depression was in reality my soul talking to me, trying to reach me and, and signaling me that there was a new path there for me. And we can kind of see why we hold, you know, beauty and glamour and money and fame in very high regard. So on one hand, I think they may have been concerned because after all, something that used to be important to you, you have now lost interest in. And then, of course, there's that societal pressure of, probably a lot of people wanted to be you. So they couldn't understand why you were walking away from something that they saw as so desirable. Do you think for people out there who are walking away from something that they've spent a lot of time and effort in, that the reaction of their friends and family and support system is a barrier to them moving on? Well, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, we as humans are social animals. 
So it's not that we cannot make it alone. Of course we can, but it's much more difficult if we don't have a support system. And if all the people around us, our best friends, our, our partner, our family, uh, doesn't understand, you know, what we are going through, uh, it's not easy. And of course, in my case, I also doubted myself. Apparently, I had it all. So I also started doubting myself and thinking, have I really gone crazy? You know, am I really throwing away everything good that there is in my life? I mean, I was looking around me and all the other people seemed happy. My co-workers seemed happy, the other models, my husband seemed happy in that because my husband was a, a fashion model as well. So why are they happy? Why for them it's okay and it's not for me? If the people around you don't support you, it's also easy that, that you start doubting yourself as well. Obviously, we just met, and I, I know it turned out okay for you, and I know you're doing wonderful things and, and great things, and I know that, more importantly, you're much happier now. But even as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, oh, man, I don't know. that That's a lot to give up. So I imagine that many people, when stepping outside their comfort zone, feel exactly the same way. What are some ways to get over that barrier? What are some ways to not only step outside of your comfort zone, but to do so when a lot of people and people who are very meaningful to you really aren't backing that plan? So I normally uh, advise people to ask some coaching questions. Um, What is the cost for me? to stay in this situation. We normally focus on the cost that we pay to follow our dreams. Say we normally ask ourselves, okay, but if I do that, like uh, if I leave my job, if I leave this relationship, if I, I don't know, leave my hometown, what will be the cost that I will pay? Uh, I will have no money, I will have no friends, uh, I will fail, etc., etc. But we seldom focus on another question, which is far more important. And it is, what is the cost that I'm I'm paying if I stay here? If I stay in a job that I don't like anymore? If I stay in a relationship that has nothing more to offer? If I stay in, in, in a situation that is my comfort zone, but doesn't make me grow, doesn't nurture me anymore? Once you realize that the cost that you are paying is so high, then it really gives you a good motivation to go out of your comfort zone. Another thing is really to ask another coaching question, self-coaching question, which is, if I didn't have fear, if I didn't feel fear, what would I do? Because normally uh, we let fear advise us instead of letting love be our advisor. Normally we make decisions out of fear rather than making decisions out of love. And so that's another, you know, new paradigm. I really like what you said there. There's a, a meme on Facebook that I really like. And it says, instead of imagining what could go wrong, imagine what could go right. We're, we're afraid. We don't want it to happen. It's uncomfortable. It feels poorly. And we allow that to stop us from getting to the thing that feels positive or good or extraordinary. And then we end up sort of like right in the middle, right? We're, we're no longer afraid, but we're also not excited. We're safe. And that's what a comfort zone is, right? Yeah, which actually, I think we should call it discomfort zone rather than comfort zone because it it becomes a prison after a while. I mean, for me, I, I wasn't so courageous to jump out of my comfort zone immediately. I spent like at least a couple of years, if not more, you know, into that depression, trying to resist change, lying to myself keeping on telling myself uh, that I didn't have any clarity on what I wanted. Instead, internally, I was very clear on what I wanted. It was just that it was too difficult to admit it even to myself. So I stayed in that discomfort zone for like a long time and it became a prison. And this prison, it, it suffocates you. It takes all your energy, all your vitality. And so We call it comfort zone, but it should really be called discomfort zone. We'll be right back after we hear from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. 
Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. We are back talking about ways to improve your life by stepping outside of your comfort zone. I think the idea of having safety can be a prison. And I think that that is really what is going to maybe challenge the audience because the audience is going to think to themselves, wait a minute, if you're saying that I'm safe, I'm in prison. Can you expand on that in, in a way to let people know that just because you're safe or mediocre or okay, that doesn't mean that you're excelling or succeeding. It just means that you're safe uh, and that safe isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing either. Um, well, I'd like to quote Maslow, you know, Abraham Maslow, the great psychologist yes. yeah, of the last century. And he used to say that if you plan to not use your capacities, if you plan to play it safe and not to stretch yourself, you'll be unhappy for your whole life. Of course, I'm not saying that we should, you know, jump off the cliff <laughs> with no parachute or doing stupid things. But the idea is to stretch ourselves because otherwise we can't grow exactly the same as, you know, when we go to the gym. Say we, we lift weights, after a while we need to increase the weights, otherwise we don't train our muscles. If we train for a marathon or even just, you know, running, after a while, maybe we start running five minutes, then we run 10 minutes, then we run 15 minutes, then half an hour, then we run faster, because that's the way we train. If we keep on running just for five minutes at the same speed for year then we are not really training and that is so obvious when we talk about sports but the same principle here applies to our inner growth if we don't stretch ourselves we don't grow and if we don't grow we don't develop our capacities and if we don't develop our capacities we'll never know the full expression of our talents will never be self-actualized. I think the meaning of a life, of a human life, is really to, to use our capacities, our talents, to serve the world in, in some ways, to serve the communities. And so the only way to do that is really to stretch ourselves, to train ourselves. And in order to do that, we need to do new things, to, to train exactly as we would in, in the physical sense. Thank you so much. And, and I couldn't agree more. And in preparing for this interview, I read a whole bunch of things that, that you wrote. And, and one of the articles was stepping outside of your comfort zone. And it was a, it's a short little article and it has three things in there that you can do to step outside of your comfort zone. And one of them is trust your gut. And, and I understand that. And I've heard it before. And, and one of them was believe in yourself. And, and that makes sense. I understand why we have to believe in ourselves. But the one that really caught my eye, and I'd like you to talk a little more on is, is the very first one. And it said, do something ordinary in a non-ordinary way. Yeah. So the idea there is to really let go of your fear of being judged by other people and to train yourself with little things like for example you could wear a pair of shoes of different colors or open your umbrella on a sunny day do something that is really ordinary but in a different way so you will be maybe judged by other people but you just don't care you will catch the attention of other people, but it's okay. Because one of the limitations that we self-impose on ourselves is that we want to please other people, that we don't want to be different from others. And yet our capacities and our talents are in our uniqueness. So if we don't do things because of our fear of judgment, then we are limiting ourselves. And so 
uh, these little exercises and it can be, I don't know, sing out loud, you know, uh, <laughs> like while you are, while you are walking on the street, just sing your preferred song and sing it out loud. It, it may be, you know, little things or even ask people favors, like even people that you don't know so well or your co-workers, but ask them weird favors, like, uh, would you buy me a holiday? Uh, or, <laughs> would you, you know, or they would look at you and say, you've gone nuts, but it's okay. And then you can say, oh, okay, I'm just, you know, doing an exercise. But the idea is really to be okay with other people's judgment, to be okay if other people say no to you, so you're more free to really be yourself. One of the examples that you used in your article was brush your teeth with the wrong hand. So if you normally use your right hand, use your left hand. And I did this. I, I went ahead and, and brushed my teeth with the quote unquote wrong hand. It was very difficult to do. And uh, it took an ordinary habit, something like brushing my teeth, and it turned it into this, you know, five minute exercise and or ordeal it made something ordinary, non-ordinary. Absolutely. And this has also got to do with our awareness because we humans are creatures of habit. So for example, we, we always brush our teeth in the same way. We don't put our awareness on brushing our teeth and that's okay. No. But the exercise is precisely because then when you brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand, then of course you need to put your attention into that. And so that's how we slowly, slowly change our habits. The same goes with, for example, it's normal to wear our shoes when we go out. But when you wear two different sets of shoes, like one one color and the other one of a different color, then you've done something different. And then you are more aware, you know, of how you are dressed, of the people looking at you. And then it brings your awareness to your everyday habit. And so once you're, you're more aware, you also can start deciding to have new habits, new thoughts, do new things instead of keeping on with your routine. The, the other article that I loved was the 21 day challenge. And you give 10 examples of things that you can do over those 21 days and uh, there's some expected things in there, you know, exercise at least 20 minutes every day, improve your diet, throw away things that you don't need anymore. And I think a lot of people can really relate to those. We see that a lot. And then there was a couple of suggestions that I think, uh, while not as obvious as diet and exercise, I think people can really relate to, you know, like learn something new or use positive words instead of negative words or be more creative. But there were three in that list that really gave me a moment to pause. The first one was do something for yourself early in the morning. Yeah, because we are all so used to be good parents, be good partners, be good daughters or sons, be good workers. In other words, do our duty. And that's okay, of course, but at the same time, we risk to spend the whole day doing things for others or doing what we have to do instead of what we really want to do. And so we risk of getting at night with, with some resentment within us, uh, with some sensation that, you know, we've been running the whole day without really taking care of ourselves. If we start the day doing something for ourselves first and then we go about doing our life. We all had a vase full of love, that love can flow to the others as well. But if that vase is not full of love for ourselves first, we don't have anything to offer, to really offer to other people. It sets the, the day in a totally different energy. And of course, the flip side to that, which sort of goes along with do something for yourself early in the morning, is before going to bed, spend 10 minutes to think about what went well during the day. We tend to hold on to the negativity, right? Is, is that kind of the logic of patting yourself on the back? Well, it's even more than that. As you said, our minds are programmed to focus on the negative. Our reptilian brain is primed to do that. 
And so we really need to do something to use our awareness and our intention to do something to steer the, the, the wheel of our brain in a different direction. It's also that when we, when we start focusing on the positive, then we feel more motivated to go on with our projects. Otherwise, if we always focus on what's not working, we lose interest, we lose motivation, we lose energy. And then we decide, why should I care? Nothing works. The most exciting one on the list and one that I personally have never thought of for happiness, stepping outside of your comfort zone, improving your life, teach something every day, share your gifts with other people. Yeah, so there there are many reasons here. So one reason is the best way to learn something is to teach it. (laughs) Because, of course, when we teach something, we need to know it well. For example, if we teach someone, let's say our kids or a friend to be positive, we need to train our positivity. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to teach it. And so that forces us, you know, to learn something new. And also the other reason here is to share our knowledge, to share our experiences, to in a way try to make a difference in the world. And when I say, when I talk about the world, I mean our community, our family, our co-workers, our friends, or even the bigger world out there. The idea is really to share uh, your talents, your gifts, with the world, with someone else, to feel that our presence is useful. It has been great speaking with you, and I really appreciate all the information that you've given us. Thank you, Gabe. It was amazing. Where can our listeners find you? So they can find me uh, in my website, which is my name, basically, www.luciagiovanini.com, L U C. I-A-G-I-O-V-A-N-N-I-N-I.com. You can also find a free gift, a five-part video series on change, on how to create the, the changes we want in our life. And there they can also find my book, A Whole New Life. Thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate you. And we appreciate all of our listeners as well. Please don't forget to give us a review on whatever podcast player you found us on. While we like five stars, we also like it if you use your words. You can also head over to our Facebook group at psychcentral.com slash FB show. That'll take you right in. Join and I'll approve you. And you can talk to me and suggest anything that you want. And remember, Remember, you can get one week of free, convenient, affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere, simply by visiting betterhelp.com slash Psych Central. We will see everybody next week. You've been listening to the Psych Central podcast. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show or on your favorite podcast player. To learn more about our host, Gabe Howard, please visit his website at gabehoward.com. PsychCentral.com is the Internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website run by mental health professionals. Overseen by Dr. John Grohall, PsychCentral.com offers trusted resources and quizzes to help answer your questions about mental health, personality, psychotherapy, and more. Please visit us today at PsychCentral.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email show at PsychCentral.com. Thank you for listening, and please share widely.